You're watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On today's show, we'll discuss Africa's sustainable finance ecosystem. You can join today's conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market, and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awuni. Now, according to the UN Environment Program, findings from the Nigeria Sustainable Finance Roadmap highlights that the demand for additional sustainable investment in Nigeria is about 92 billion US dollars annually up to the year 2030. Evan Sosano, Director of Financial Markets, FSD Africa. Tumi Sekoni, Associate Executive Director for Capital Markets at FMDQ. Olumide Lala, African Market Program Manager, Climate Bonds Initiative. Join me today to discuss Africa's sustainable finance ecosystem. Thank you so much for taking the time out to join us today. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of, I mean, there's so many conversations ongoing about how we need to, how Africa, Nigeria also, can uh, unlock these uh, much needed uh, Fi uh, finance or cash as a way uh, into sustainable uh, projects. I mean, we're talking, there's this whole conversation also on climate change, how we need more sustainable, how we need to channel funds into, to, into more sustainable uh, climate environment friendly projects as a way. But I'd like us to start with um, where we are in terms of sustainable finance. Mm -hmm. Evans, let me start with you, this, Africa as a whole, where are we right now? Good. So maybe I should start by defining what sustainable finance okay. is. Um, it's basically finance that takes into account not just the profits that are being generated from projects, but also the impact on people and also the planet, which is what we call an environment. So if we extrapolate that, we talk about uh, ESG principles or environmental social governance principles. And the UN, of course, has gone further to break it down into sustainable development goals in those three you know, categories. Okay. So that's what uh, we generally talk about, uh, uh, sustainable finance. Right. Okay. Tim, let me, hear your, let me hear your thoughts on that. The way I see it is sustainability just goes, as, as um, Dr. Evans said, goes beyond profits. We also have to look at the social, environmental, and governance aspects of things. So when we talk about social, we talk about healthcare. We talk about human rights, for instance. You know, so those things are things that um, just go beyond I'm just going to make some money, which is just going to be for maybe just a few. Mm -hmm. But I'm also looking at how, at how the environment is sustained for future generations and how people are able to actually live, you know, good lives. You know, so. Olumide, let me come to you. Now, Nigeria already has you know, taken that first step, uh, trying to develop its green bond market. We saw that issue last year, the first uh, green bond. And uh, we had good subscription. But talk to us, first of all, your perspective on the first general question and what strides or where we are as a country in terms of how we're trying to develop our green bonds market. Um, I guess where we are, it's not where we need to be, for starters. Um, I think it's beyond self. Um, we make reference to the issuance of the federal government bond, okay. um, which was obviously the government taking the first step to defining uh, what was a demonstration bond, but defining the standards to which we will all be held accountable. That said, the market itself will not grow from just the government. That's why we de developed and started the market development program. It's actually focusing on the corporate itself and how the corporates can partner with the government to actually help develop the economy. Um, you make reference to the FGN issuance. Mm. Encouragingly, we've just had two corporate bonds issued, okay. uh, one which was the first certified uh, in Africa. So there's a, a lot of momentum gathering, as it were. So that I find encouraging, especially the fact that we've done this in literally less than a year since the program started. And I do recall when the program started, people were a bit skeptical about, you know, is this some new phase that will die soon? But I guess in terms of development itself, uh, we're heading in the right direction, but plenty needs to be done. And, yep. uh, and we will get back to that. Okay, Evans, plenty needs to be done, like Ulumide said. But uh, would you say that we're already on the right path? Because I know that, I mean, at the end of the day, we, st we, don't, we still have the scarcity of large pool yeah. of funds. Yeah. Banking sector, not so much. Pension yeah. funds, maybe. But, you know, we need to galvanize more of that. Exactly. So the green bond market is a new market. It's an nascent market. It's basically started uh, 10 years ago. Globally, it has grown very, very quickly, but it's still niche. If you look at the size of green bond market relative to the global bond market, which is $100 trillion, it's relatively small. But I think in Africa, we have a very unique opportunity because our markets are very small. So we can start by building them up. So there's no reason why we can't have a lot of the sovereign bonds that are coming to the market being green because there's a lot of investment opportunities that governments can invest their proceeds in that uh, will be green. Then the same thing can also be said about the corporate sector. There's also a lot of needs where long-term funding might be needed, 
and it can be all be raised uh, in green bonds. So the opportunity is quite immense. If you look at the investor base in Africa, it's quite large. We are talking about a trillion dollars of assets under management sitting between pension funds, insurance companies, and collective investment vehicles. That's a lot of money. And that money can be channeled into investments that will be sustainable where those investors can be able to gain a decent uh, mm. uh, return on the investment whilst contributing positively to the development of the African continent and the, the people. Yeah. So, I mean, I know that the FMDQ, uh, OTC Securities Exchange, is working with key stakeholders to integrate the principles of sustainable finance into you know, the debt capital market for better returns. And just to get everyone, everyone to know the benefits you know, of, you know, and the importance of mobilizing such funds into such our projects. Tell us uh, about that and where we are right now, where you are, the FMDQ is right now, in terms of the kind of progress that's been made so far. So, um, FMDQ is, has partnered with Climbing Bonds Initiative okay. and um, FSD Africa for to develop um, or to champion, if you will, a green bond market development program. And that is a program that has been slated to happen for over three years. Now, we're not saying three years is all we need to get to where we need to, but at least to sort of start that. Now, FMDQ being a capital markets platform, you know, this essentially where, you know, in investments and um, the need for investment sort of come together. So the part we want to play or the part we are playing is trying to get that information out there, you know, market awareness, certainly market education, because people don't understand what it is they're going into, they wouldn't even be a part of it. And letting people see, you know, the benefits or not so much, well, not only the benefits, but the need, you know, has arisen for, you know, green finance, sustainable finance, you know, as a whole. And this is an opportunity for Nigeria to, you know, get on the bandwagon and ensure that, you know, we're able to make that sustainable. It's, it's been happening for over 10 years, and one can say we might be late, but maybe not so much late, you know, so we might as well start that now mm. and carry on. So FMDQ's um, positioning is we're able to bring all the relevant stakeholders together, you know, towards this, you know, un united cause. I was going to ask you what the feedback has been so far. The feedback has, has, has been great. There was a, an investors conference, an investors event yesterday, and that focused on the pension industry mm -hmm. and um, the, the, the idea, you know, people are just knowing and understanding this a bit more and seeing the opportunities there and also the need and, and, and I think the need is quite important you know when you see that there's something you know there's a need and we need to sort of resolve that chances of it sort of dying away after a couple of years will be very very minimal you know so this is the right time and unfortunately we're actually seeing the effects and that is happening even in Africa you know and it's a case of getting there now and very quickly so that we can actually sustain our nation, really. Mm. Now, Olumide, like you said, we, I'll come back to you, Evans. Like you said earlier, I mean, obviously, we, starting is the right, you know, just starting, we're not late, but it's just starting is the right step to take. But just looking across the African continent, uh, are there other countries that we can, t Nigeria now, that we can take a leaf from? Uh, we looking at other models, perhaps economies similar to ours, and one, two, are there com uh, countries that are already taking the, the lead uh, as far as this is concerned? So l let me start by saying that even though the three of us sit down here, C Climate Bonds Institute, FMDQ, and FSD Africa, uh, we, we, if you will, are the starting point. Mm. This goes beyond us. I mean, it's, as I said, it's beyond self. So the stakeholder community which we've engaged with so far and has been very encouraging, included SEC, where we actually sit down and build the rules. We've had to deal with the uh, Environment Ministry, we've had to deal with Finance Ministry, DMO, we've had to deal with CBN, uh, all the way down to even our partners at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, all the way through to uh, uh, the corporates on the issuing side, as well as Pencom, who yeah. helped host the uh, investor conference yesterday. So it is actually uh, ours, if you will. It's a community uh, uh, issue, not just the three of us sitting down here. We are, if you will, the, the proponent uh, 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 of the message. But okay. it takes all of us, even the individuals themselves, because you need to understand how this impacts you personally. So in terms of where we're going, look, Nigeria is always taking the lead, um, if you will, uh, on Africa. But one would argue, as I travel around Africa, I find that other African states are doing things that, if you will, we should have, we, we should have been doing way back in the day. Take Rwanda, for instance. I, I make reference to Rwanda as being one of the cleanest cities in the world. I mean, I've never been to Singapore, but uh, I, I can certainly state right here that Kigali is a lot cleaner than, than uh, 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 New York or London. Now, that has implications to your health. That implications 
to even the type of environment you live in, in terms of the jobs that you want to actually live uh, to do, in terms of uh, uh, the properties and the housing that accommodation that you want to be in. So it goes beyond just the, env the environment, if you will. There's a developmental requirement here. And, and where we talk about green finance, it means different things to different people. So in the West, we talk about climate initially, but we need to focus more on the developmental aspect of this initiative for Africa, okay, and Evans, especially Nigeria. Evans, let me come. You wanted to add something earlier? Let me just cover part of that. What okay. I wanted to say was that uh, the Green Bond Program here in Nigeria is building an ecosystem. So we're taking a market building approach because it's a new, uh, in a new instrument we're introducing in the market. So the lack of awareness cuts across uh, different layers from regulators, from the market, from intermediaries, from potential issuers. And that's what the program is trying to address by coming up with the invest investment guideline of coming up with issuance guidelines that will enable issuers who want to come to the market to actually issue bonds that are certified as a, a, or labeled as green. And then we also training and working with the investors to understand why investing in green is important. And then of course, hand-holding potential issuers to come to the market so that they can understand the process of issuing a green labeled or certified uh, bonds in the market. And then, of course, trying to build a community of uh, locally based uh, verifiers okay. will be able to provide uh, services to the green bond market in Nigeria beyond the three-year program uh, period that we have. Okay, let's yeah. go now into, I mean, the opportunities in the market, opportunities for institutional investors. To me, let me come to you now. Which sectors would you say offer the most opportunity for sustainable finance in Nigeria? Oh. It's, it's pretty much everywhere hmm. around. And... There's but would housing. you say they're priority sectors? Well, Should we yeah, prioritize? I, would, I would say transportation, mm. you know, um, and we're probably we're speaking earlier before we started the program and talking about how, you know, there's road congestion, you know, there is there is pollution everywhere. Now, if we had um, more as in better um, public transportation system, you'd find fewer people needing to use cars and obviously lower gas emissions. So transportation, housing, I mean, there's a housing deficit, you know, and when we're building houses, we can actually build them in line with ensuring that they're sustainable. So I would say um, transportation, housing, at least there's, there's also hydro, you know, there's water. <laughs> it's, like I, said, it's, I think there's a and lot, across, of, almost across everywhere, because we're yeah. pretty much in, at the beginning stages, you know, in Nigeria. So it's a huge opportunity. So when you want to, you know, build you know, your transport networks, look at it being, you know, look at the sustainable angle. When you're building more houses, look at that angle as well. So I think okay. that's just a Definitely not business as usual, a different model now. I mean, different, these times have called for a different, the need for a different model altogether. Absolutely. We're going to take a short break at this point to we'll come back and pick up from where we left off. Thank you for your time so far. I've been speaking to Evans Osano, Director of Financial Markets, FSD Africa, to me, Sekonia, Associate Executive Director for Capital Markets at FMDQ, Olumide Lala, Africa Markets Program Manager, Climate Bonds Initiative. We'll continue. If you're just joining us, Evans Osano, Director of Financial Markets, FSD Africa, Tumi Sekoni, Associate Executive Director for Capital Markets at FMDQ, and Olumide Lala, African Market Program Manager, Climate Bonds Initiative, are with me today. And we're discussing Africa's sustainable finance ecosystem. Olumide, let me start with you. Picking up from where we left, of looking at some of the uh, sectors that uh, pose, that can be, uh, where we can start from as far as opportunities are concerned. We're talking about power just before we went on the break. And it's, been, it's often been said that, look, if we can solve the power problem, you know, we solve a myriad of other uh, challenges. But let's hear your perspective. Well, I'll put it this way. To develop any nation, right, it's said that you need 1,000 megawatts per million people. Japan today has 126 million people, and they generate 312,000 megawatts. South Africa down the road has 55 million people, and they generate 50,000 megawatts. Nigeria has three times the size of South Africa, and we only distribute less than 5,000 megawatts. Now, that tells you something. For me, it's not, about, it's not a numbers game. You can tell me all day long that we have potentially the largest economy in Africa. But, you know, it's about what you actually generate. If you cannot power your industry, you're literally dead in the water. So for me, energy is the first point to call. Now, just to put you in perspective, we talk about oil and gas. Now, even as a transitional path, yeah, with, to a low carbon, which is renewables, we talk about oil and gas today, and nobody's even focusing on the gas that we have in so much magnitude, but is actually being wasted and literally polluting the economy. If you solve that problem, moving from crude to gas to renewables, you move away from deforestation because 50% of our domestic energy is firewood. We use aviation forests for cooking, kerosene. We need to get rid of that. 
So it's even about impacting your health. If you have a more productive society, you create more generate, you generate more jobs. You create more opportunities for people to have access to other things, education, good health, food security, for instance. So for me, this is a national security issue. But the conversation here is about how do you access finance for the small to medium size enterprises that actually help generate and develop this economy. Today, banks are the only sources that you have for those money. But banks are risk adverse. They don't understand development finance. It's not their space. They will typically risk appetite is between three to five years. So we need to start focusing on how we connect the banking sector to the capital markets itself. And that could be done through the intervention funds, which are available. Unfortunately, not a lot of people know about this. And that's part of why this program is set up, to educate, to avail people of the opportunities that connects the finance through the various channels to the projects that actually need to be developed. So you can develop the pipelines that would eventually be aggregated for bond issuance, which will be sold on the market. Now, Evans, when I listen to Olumide saying that, I just, in my mind, it just feels like it would take several years for this to happen. But is there, is there, are there ways that we can just leapfrog, ways that we can bring, cut this short and make this happen in, you know, sooner than later? Sure, you know, you've got to start somewhere. And I think one of the best ways to start is by demonstrating that this is possible. And we demonstrate by actually issuing bonds in the market. And uh, we are actually very fortunate in the case of Nigeria that two issues have come to the market and successfully raised money in both instances oversubscribed. So that's already clearly shows there's appetite for these bonds in the market. There are issuers who are prepared to come out in the market and raise money that is going to go into sustainable investments. Now we want more issuers to come to the market. And I think that's part of the, what the program is meant to do, to educate those issuers so that we can continuously create a pipeline of issuers who will be coming to market not just once or twice, but will become repeat issues in the market. And I think we can also learn from what is happening elsewhere as well. So we don't have to wait uh, many years before we do uh, what um, Japan has done mm -hmm. or the UK has done or France has done. There, there are a lot of ways in which we can be able to learn. And I think one of the other quick wins I think we can get is encouraging even issuers. I mean, sovereign. I talked about initially about sovereign issuers coming to the market. and leading the way in terms of uh, repeat issues of benchmark size, of reasonable size that can create a good uh, benchmark for the rest of the market. I believe there might be also opportunities if we do much more work of education within the state governments. There's no reason why the state governments who are issuing bonds in the market should not issue green bonds in the market. And I think that will be the next, when I look at Nigeria, that will be the next frontier of where that uh, supply is going to come from. You know, I don't want this to be in Nigeria, just a Nigeria-only conversation. Yeah. Uh, when you talk, when you, when you say this, are you talking across the board as in uh, the picture, are you painting a picture across African markets that, in terms of how this can be done? E exactly. And I'm using Nigeria as an example. Okay. So there are other countries that are also in this path. Kenya already has a green bond program that okay. uh, we are also partnering in okay. together with the Climate Bonds Initiative. Okay. And it's very similarly built to the Nigeria program, we are also trying to create an ecosystem. And we have a number of uh, potential issuers that we are supporting, are very, very actively hand-holding them to encourage them to come to the market and be an example for to the others on what is possible to, to be achieved. And we are also working with uh, other uh, governments in Africa as well who are also interested uh, in coming to the market. The Kenyan government has also indicated they want to come to the market and issue a reasonable size uh, bond that will be green and not necessarily just one bond but uh, make it as part of a continuous uh, program there's a lot of appetite coming out unfortunately africa stands as the greatest risk of uh, climate change and people are realizing that that they need to do something about it because otherwise uh, they will be investing in assets that may be over time be, might become uh, stranded yeah, so there's a there's a big opportunity i think for us to do good as well as um, you know get a decent uh, a return on the investments that we make in the continent. Uh, that's, that's a good point you made. I mean, those, you mentioned what's stranded there. I mean, yeah. I like you, I like you to weigh in on that. I mean, for here, here in Nigeria, are we seeing that same amount of appetite? So I, I think for me, the key thing is about marketing this, and and, and I use marketing quite loosely in that, mm -hmm. when people actually do not see the impact. You know, you're talking about um, quick wins and all of that. Sometimes, on knowing. The potential effect is probably probably resides with just a few, you know. But we're talking about millions and millions of people that will be impacted and affected. So, okay. when we are able to actually get some of these funds to even support these projects, communicating or letting people be aware of the impacts 
you know, I, th I think will go a long way. Now, in terms of the appetite, I, th I think what you will find, especially those who have the, the funding, the, the funding hasn't probably, we, we, we need to find a way to be able to galvanize the much wider space, maybe the retail space. So even even the those who are saving, maybe like have a national savings program or something that can actually go into these um, sort of projects. The, we, we look at the pension scheme. That was mandated. If we didn't have that, we probably wouldn't have as much, you know, on the buy side go into some of these, these projects. So it's about having that way, thinking of a way of galvanizing more of these savings, more of this, you know, these potential investments into that instead of having to just rely only on the maybe big companies or mm -hmm. you know the 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 big the institutional in investors that understand this. So yeah. talking about being stranded, I think the, the appetite is there, but I think we also need to get that interest extended and seeing how we can actually galvanize even the retail space. Well, maybe you can pick it up from there. How do we get this? How do we get this into? Because it yeah. just it would just seem that we're still obviously we're still at the preliminary in the early stages and buy in is still still growing as it were. But I'm just thinking that at the end of the day, how much time do we have on our hands? We're already seeing the effects of climate change. Nigeria has I mean there's we're still we're being called the poverty capital of the world right now. So there's so many projects across so many sectors that need you know, those finances to go into immediately. So I'm just wondering, we're still talking at the preliminary stage here. Yeah, how, how can we make things move faster? Well, you know what? We, it's unfortunate we don't, we don't have enough time. But at the same time, we do a lot of talking in Nigeria and, and for all parts in Africa and, and probably to action. If you look at the entire globe today, you've got half a trillion dollars worth of green bonds, yeah? of which you only have three billions issued in Africa. Out of that three billion, you've got 2.2 .2 billion issued by the African Development Bank. So for me, the opportunity for the corporates and the, and the state to get involved is, is just immense. Yeah, Are they we, aware of that opportunity? Because we always, we always so, say there's, so, there's so, opportunity. So, so, there's, okay, how right. do we merge that opportunity okay, so with those exactly. who are to make it Opportunities happen. and potentials don't pay bills. Okay. So literally, we've talked about, it's all about definition. Dr. Sano mentions the word stranded. What does stranded mean, for instance? You keep investing in oil and gas. So you invest, take oil products or oil investments today. Everybody around the world is moving away from oil products. They're building cars that are renewable uh, hybrids and the likes. So at some point, your investment in an oil industry will disappear because nobody's going to buy that oil. So that's number one. In terms of what, does green, what are green bonds? Bonds are structured the same. It's the use of proceeds. What do we use them for? So once you begin to understand what the use of proceeds are, then you begin to understand which opportunities you're looking at, be it energy, be it transportation, uh, waste, waste to energy, agriculture. These are things that affect us every day. But at the same time, one of the things I think we need to really focus on is why, for me, this is very important and a means of developing the corporate market. It's actually the reporting and the monitoring side of things. Money is very fungible, and people, for all intents and purposes, are always skeptical about where money goes. So you need to understand that the reason why people are investing in this are the monitoring processes to ensure that the money which you put forward mm. is applied to the projects themselves and they don't go to waste, as okay. it's all been the case. But more importantly, issuers are required to report on this on a regular basis. So that's the thing that investors need to realize. Okay, we have just three minutes left. Okay. Evans, I mean, okay, going forward, yeah. uh, obviously I know that we are all hopeful this yeah. partnership is a good thing, yeah. but going forward, what, what should we expect? Uh, I know that, uh, I mean, these things would take time, obviously, this is one of them, but in terms of effect, impact, yeah. what should we look forward to? Yeah, thank you very much for that. So what we have done so far is uh, planting the seed okay. to show that this is possible. We have encouraged issuers to come to the market. They have raised money, and that money that has been raised is going to sustainable investments. So we have shown the example. We can't be there forever. We are hoping that um, the market will pick from where we left. And we'll continue, of course, uh, providing uh, communication, providing capacity building or training so that people can understand this asset class, issues can understand why they should come to the market and educating the public as well, why they should be a bit more conscious about the environment. I hope that over time okay. this asset class is going to become a mainstream asset class. And I think as I said before, in Africa we are fortunate that we are starting from a situation where our markets are fairly nascent, so we can build those markets sustainably from the, okay. from the word go. And that's a big opportunity that we have over the more developed uh, markets. Okay, Jimmy, yeah. your thoughts on that? I'll say market education, okay. awareness, more products, product development, at least that's also from the um, exchange side, and um, immediately capacity building to 
you know, the issuers, investors, intermediaries. Who's making that investment? I mean, when you talk about capacity. So, like I said, part of the partnership, okay. and even from FMDQ's perspective okay. as, as, as well as, as part of our product development and market development sort of engagement and rallying the, all the stakeholders okay. in support of that. Speaking about stakeholders, I mean, the government, I mean, the role of the government here. I am very encouraged because people are beginning to do and build on what it is that we've started. And uh, for me, we don't have time. Uh, time is something we don't have. Um, we have to hack now. And I think we have, people have already started doing that. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. And of course, the better insight on this. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. I've been speaking to Evans Osano. He's the Director of Financial Markets at FSD Africa. Also joining us today was Tumi Sekone, Associate Executive Director for Capital Markets at FMDQ and Olumide Lala, Africa Markets Program Manager. Climate Bonds Initiative. On we've been speaking on Africa's sustainable finance ecosystem. Well, that's it on Beyond Market. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Remember, you can watch the show at 5 p.m. West African time daily, and have access to all previous episodes of the show on our website. That's cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Market, and you can follow my Twitter handle too at Esther O Awoni. For myself and the team, to have a great day.